Tell him get Gaylord, my lawyer. Tell him to be at the night court as quick as he can. Now, wait a minute, Alex. You're the manager, so don't pass the buck to me. Don't be silly. I just happened to remember I got a date. Where? Philadelphia. Come on, buddy. Come on. Get my note. I know. Oh. Say, don't you mugs ever get tired of playing cops and robbers? So you want to get tough, do you? All right. Here we go, Tom. Yeah. Oh, save those lunch hooks for the crowd. Hey, Dixie, I'll go get a mouthpiece. Go on, beat it. Yeah, tell them I want to sue these flat feet for disorderly conduct. Okay, come on, get in the car. I'll see you in court. This is a disgrace I'll never live down. Permitting a man like Jefferson Baxter to drive me out of town. What are you worrying about? He doesn't know you from Adam. Yeah, but he happens to be allergic to my business. Look what I'm giving up. A self-made bookmaker with a flourishing business and a terrific stable of horses. And that is a blitz. <laughs> <laughs> the counselor's lucky. Yeah, lucky to have you. He's uh, either a lucky lawyer or I might say he cheats. Well, I learn a lot from my clients. Gentlemen, that disparaging remark was meant for us. <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. Just got two tickets for San Francisco. One room and a roomette. A roomette? I hadn't heard about that. What's that? Oh, that's a place for me to lay down my weary head at night. <laughs> uh, Maxwell, why is it you can't sleep in an upper anymore? Now, mind you, I'm just curious. Well, you see, it's like this. I get frightened when I'm cramped up into a small place. Oh, a claustrophobiac. Uh, would you break that up in little pieces for me? Well, claustrophobia means that you're in a tight place and you're afraid you can't get out. You know what that is? Oh, that's dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Tim, Irene called me today. Huh? Your wife, remember? She wants the rent money. Taxation without representation, that's what I call it. Okay, Patrick Henry, but what do I tell Irene? You're my lawyer, you think of something. Be sure you don't miss that train. Maxwell! All right, Chef. Give me the apartment key. Oh, sure, sure, yes, yes. Is the luggage at the depot? Yes, sir, and you know what I put on it? California, here we come, by request. Take care of the apartment. Don't let the cozy little nest go to waste. Yeah, yeah. So long, fellas, we'll see you when the Paul lives from our fair city. Well, here's Gabriel, and he brought us home. Well, come right on in. It's open house. We want to hear you blow, but we got to blow. What's up, Scat? Our show was rated in the cast is in the clink. Uh-oh. Here we go again. Sounds like some of Old Man Baxter's work to me. Is Alec in the clink, too? No. A funny thing. Just as it happened, he suddenly had to go to Philadelphia. Ho, oh, ho! Oh. Good old Alec. But he wants you to get the cast out. Yeah. It goes without saying that the this is on the cuff. Well, come on, it'll be a pleasure to tangle with old man Baxter. Keep the coffee warm, boys. This invasion won't last. Okay, Gil? Has counsel anything to say in behalf of Miss Barlow before the court pronounces sentence? May I have one moment, Your Honor? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, sir. Has Dixie got a mother? Everybody's got a mother. I would like to say that in giving these performances, Miss Barlow has been doing so under economic pressure. She is the sole support of an aged and widowed mother and has from time to time tried other ways of earning a livelihood to support her. If this defendant is given a jail sentence, her mother will be left destitute, perhaps homeless. We ask the court's mercy, not for Dixie Barlow alone, but for her poor mother. I'm sure the defendant has learned her lesson. It is the sentence of this court that Dixie Barlow serve 180 days in the county workhouse. But, Your Honor, the court hereby suspends sentence, and the defendant is placed on probation for the said period and releases her in custody of her mother. It is not the intention of this court to break up a happy home. Your address, Miss Barlow. What? Uh, oh, 1062 East 55th Street, Your Honor. Now, I must say, Your Honor... Mr. Baxter, the case is closed. O'Brien, you're an officer of the law. You know how to follow up cases of this kind? Yes, Mr. Baxter. Next case. We gotta get a shot of that, believe me. How about a picture, Miss Barlow? Oh, why, sure, boy. Right on the edge of the bed. Nice and bright. Make like your phony mother. Uh-uh, I'll handle the decorations myself. Okay, shoot it. Thank you. Say, how about taking one with my learned counselor? You bet. Okay, hit it, Tom. Thank you, Miss Barlow. Thanks, boys. What a plea you whipped up. Oh, I'll skip it. You were swell, Mr. Gaylord. Thank you. Well, counselor, now you can whip me up a little nest on East 55th Street. Is that all? Here it is. Holy Dixie, tell Mother I'll be up to see you later. Or 180 days in the clink. And don't tell me you prefer jail. That would be too corny. Okay, who did he? Now I'll give out with a mother. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're an orphan. I haven't had a mother since I was six. First, I give you a happy home instead of that third-rate Broadway hotel of yours. Then I have to produce a mother. I got it. Go on home, beautiful. But show up tomorrow morning at East 55th Street. 1062. There's 1420. Are you sure this is the right place? This is it. Come on. A piano. Well. Oh, Scott, you better see who lives upstairs. Okay. Might as well take these along, too. Oh, Dixie! A hundred and eighty days in a penthouse. Boy, I've been waiting all my life for a sentence like this. Three beautiful wood rods and they're all empty. What a dive, what a dump fly. It's a chateau. Oh, that must be Mother. That dear old lady rings twice. Let's give her an entrance. Yeah. enough of you last night. And take off your hat. I'm not here to see you. I want to see your mother. She's out. I'll wait. You would. Do the desk later. Yes, ma'am. Call her back. That's the woman I want. Uh, Matty, 
Will you come back here, please? She looks like the sort of woman that would appreciate a home and daughter to look after. Could you tell me where Mr. Tim Rayner's apartment is? Yes, ma'am. First door to your left, 1420. Uh, thank you. I'm Mrs. Tim Rayner, you know. Mr. Rayner's my husband. Yes, ma'am. We had a trial separation. Oh, what a trial. Oh, it was just awful. He's supposed to pay my rent money, you know, but he doesn't do it. Yes, ma'am. You know what happens to men in this stage who don't pay their wife's rent money? No, ma'am. You don't. They put them in jail. A big jail. With bars on it. Yes, ma'am. Big bars. We women have rights in the state, my young man. Didn't you know that? No, ma'am. Well, remember it, and yes, don't you forget it. Yes, ma'am. That must be Mama. It's about time. Mother! You're my mother. You're crazy. Well, I don't like the looks of things around here. Where's Tim? Oh, Tim. I mean, uh, Tim. And um, who is Tim? Why, Tim is my... Uh... <laughs> you see, officer, I gotta practice every day at this time. You know, I gotta keep a step up and lift. And not only that, I gotta lower lift. Will you be quiet? Lift, you know, lower and slow. Okay. I don't like you. Now, who are you? Who are you? Dennis O'Brien, 79th Precinct. That's got nothing to do with it. I'd like your name. How do you know you would? I didn't even tell it to you. Maybe you wouldn't like it. <laughs> Just a minute. What are you doing here? Well, I might ask you the same question. And I think I will. What are you doing here? I'm supposed to watch this girl. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? A great big man like you watching a poor little girl like that. Why, you ought to be out trying to get some robbers or some saboteurs. Why, you don't even know which side your bread is, uh, what side your bread is, um... Buttered. Can you get some? Now, look here, lady. Now, you look here. This apartment belongs to my husband. Uh, uh, yes, why don't you be quiet? There's something going on here, and I'm going to find out what it is. Would you do me a favor? Yes. Would you go outside and see if you could find me a policeman? Lady, I am a policeman. Oh, well, why don't you do something about this? Now, this... <laughs> okay, Scott. And please be a good girl. Yes, be sensible, and like they say, let's kiss and make up. Oh, all right. <laughs> Goodbye now. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you all later. Well, of all things... I'm so sorry, Mr. Baxter. This way, I believe. Well, the nerve of that blue nose coming into my home. Well, Mr. Baxter is very pleased that you're so alert to your duty, Mr. O'Brien. Yeah. Did you see the young woman's mother? Well, I did and I didn't. She came and she went. What you have to say? I didn't get around to that. But I intend to stay here till she gets back. And so do we. Make yourselves at home, gentlemen. Remember, no one's asking you to sit down. Mama's home. Mother, darling, I'm so glad to see you. I was worried. I thought you were never going to get home. But you're here now, and everything is lovely. I, um, I've just taken the old woman to the doctor's. She's not at all well. I'm sure, gentlemen, you won't pull it through an ordeal today. Of all the numbskulls, you take the cake. I know, boss. Keep me in a drafty depot all night. Then I find out you buy tickets for next Saturday. I know, but... Now we can't blow this town for another week. Oh, boss, it was only a little mistake. A little mistake? Big enough to give Jefferson Baxter a chance to send a plea. Don't out. say jail, boss. I'll scream. I ought to say it. Come on, open up. No, and I'll buy my own ticket. Here comes Uncle Tim. Look like we're the recipients of a surprise party. Yes, and what a surprise. It's Uncle Tim. Well, hello, you old rascal. This is a big surprise. Oh, string along with the gag, will you? <laughs> this place is about as proud as the Yankee Stadium. Uh, uh, this is Uncle Tim. Just got back from the country. 
Oh, yes, I had some business to transact in the city. Yeah, you were expected. I suppose you're very proud of your daughter. But, but I can think of nothing more degrading than the ordeal she must have put you through. Unless it's the public performances she gives. But you needn't worry about that any longer. I'll see that they don't occur again. Come along, Chase. Why, you mealy mouth hypocrite, I'll get even with you. I'll make you eat dirt. I hate that man. Remember, you're still on probation. So what? Get out before you get your badge bent. I'll be back. Oh, you shouldn't say things like that, Dixie. And you too. Remember, this is just a job, not a career. Now get upstairs. There, now. Just make yourself comfortable. Take any room you like. Oh. And what does this character want? He probably wants an explanation. You see, this happens to be his apartment. Oh. Yes, oh. Now, would somebody mind explaining what it's all about? Yes, Uncle Tim. Say, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe Uncle Tim can risk staying in business a little longer. After all, you and I have one thing in common. That is, we want to tie a can to old man Baxter's tail. I think we can help one another. See, it occurs to me that old man Baxter has an eligible son, Miss uh, Barlow, Dixie Barlow. Dixie Barlow? Say, I saw you perform well, keep once... Keep your mind on business. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Baxter and his son. How can I meet him? Leave it to me, baby. Leave it to me. All right, boys, here we are. Come right this way. Here I am. How I missed you. You missed me? Yes. I missed you in Chicago, Cleveland, and Miami. But from now on, I'm going to make sure to get my rent money because I'm coming home to stay. Oh, Daffodil, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, hello, Maxwell. I'm glad to see you. That's good. I missed you too, Maxwell. That's good. I'm moving in. That ain't good. All those people here and me all alone. Oh, well, now, honey, please don't cry. But really, Daffodil, you, you're not going to stay here. You don't want me. Oh, oh it isn't that, honey. Really, it isn't. You'll be sorry. Oh, so please don't cry. I'll buy you something. I'll buy you a nice fur coat. That's the way with you men. You think all you have to do is give us a fur coat when, after all, it's your love and protection that we want. All right, Daffodil. From today on, I will give you my love and protection. Thank you, Timmy. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll get the fur coat. Oh, good evening, Mr. Rayner. Good evening. Is Harry around? Yes, sir. Follow me, please. Thank you. Hello, Harry, old kid. What's new this messy? Hello, Tim. What for you have, please? I'll have a nice short beer. A uh, short beer. Business isn't so good, is it? It's okay. It could be better. Look, Harry. I'm a man of many words where a few will do. Now, you thought you knew more about racehorses than I do. Therefore, you turned into a liability to the tune of $8,927 to be exact. Now, look you tried my business, now I'm going to try your business. Now, Harry, I'm not pressing you for the dough, but I have a dancer under my wing by the name of Dixie Barlow. Now, wait a minute, this gal packs a lot of oomph. You might have read about her in the paper. She and her coterie are going to join your club. Now, you can talk, but don't argue. Now, look, Tim. I know I owe you the dough, but I can't run my nightclub like it was a racetrack. Now, your proposition is swell, but I'm a man of a few words. No dice. I certainly put this place over with that gal. If you'd let me sing in here, business would be bigger. Oh, not that Daffy Dell, please. Hello, Tim. Oh, hello, Harry. Uh, this is Mrs. Rayner, Harry Falmer, the owner of the club. How do you do? How do you do? Got to hand it to you, Tim. You sure can pick them. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, with business like this, you can start paying off. <laughs> he wasn't talking to you. He was talking about Dixie. How do you like a stable? Seems all right to me. <laughs> Has young Baxter come in yet? Not sure, but I have a table reserved for him. What are you going to let me sing in here, Tim? Oh, Daffy Dill. Well, I got a good 
good voice, Jim. I don't know why I can't sing. You let that other girl come in here and dance. I gotta sing. If I don't sing, what have I got a throat for? <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I'll take your order now. Thanks. We'll have two waffles. Hey, I want some bacon with mine. I'm sorry, but bacon is ration. Well, oh, that's what I want is a ration of bacon. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And coffee? Well, uh, what kind of coffee do you have? Well, we have Silex, Percolator, and Drip. No, I don't like Silex. I'll have the Percolator. How about the Drip? You'll have the Percolator, too. There's a low green valley on the old Kentucky shore. There are wild many happy hours away. A sitting and a singing by the little cottage door where lived my darling Nellie Gray. Oh, my darling Nellie Gray, they have taken you away, and I'll never see my darling anymore. I'm sitting by the river and I'm weeping all the day For you're gone from the old Kentucky shore I'm a darling Nellie up in heaven where they say That they'll never take you from me anymore I'm a coming, yeah, coming As the angels clear the way Farewell to the old Kentucky shore going to be interesting. Good evening, Mr. Baxter. Good evening. We have a table reserved for you. This way, please. Thank you. You want service for Mr. Baxter. What can we serve you, Mr. Baxter? Uh, how about some champagne Roger 28? Of course. Only the best for Jeff's party. Merci, monsieur. Merci, madame. Dépêchez-vous, Louis. Jeff, I never thought you'd make a splurge in cafe society. Well, why shouldn't I? I received a special invitation from the owner of this club. No reason at all, except you're not exactly the type. What? Why, Barbara, you seem to suggest there's something I lack. Oh, Jeff, you're perfect. To look at you, you suggest home life, dependability, moderation, and everything. You see, it's because there's nothing you like. Well, that's no reason why a fellow shouldn't enjoy a bit of life. Well, that will help you start off right. <laughs> Lion, the pretty Hawaiian will teach you how to love and 
Prescription for relaxing between shows. I alternate with milk. It's a nice way to relax. Oh, I, I enjoyed your dancing very much, Miss Barlow. As a matter of fact, our whole party did. Thank you. You can see the dance floor from here. It's so long since I've danced with anyone, I think I've forgotten how. You shouldn't have any trouble finding a partner. They all seem to be having a lot of fun, don't they? Is something wrong? What? Oh, no. Except... Well, you're even more beautiful close up. You said that as though you really meant it. I did. Oh, it's mostly makeup. But the hair's real. You can feel it and prove it. You're wondering if you should kiss me. Better not try it. No, I guess I won't. Hello, Mr. Baxter. Sorry I held you up. I uh, wanted to personally bid you welcome to the Blue Lagoon. Well, I appreciate your invitation very much, but I don't know why you picked me. I, I'm not much of a man about town. Oh, you're the type of patron we like to serve. Are you having a good time? Oh, yes, very nice. Well, don't hesitate to ask for anything. The house is yours. Well, thank you. I... I suppose I'd better get back to my party. 
Yes, well, you go ahead and enjoy yourself, and I uh, hope we see you here often. Yes, Mr. Baxter, please come again. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, <laughs> thanks. Well, so long. So long. Did they give you enough time? Plenty. Coming in. Hello, Maddie. Is the princess in? No, but she'll be right back. Would you like to wait? Maddie, you'll get more beautiful by the day. No, no. None of your blarney. <laughs> oh, here she is now. Don't tell me you came to see your client dance. No, I came to see Maddie. Oh, go on with you. <laughs> You don't give much, do you? Once a guy starts, he's bound to wind up a soft touch. You ought to know that. That's the way you play. Girl has to. And a man ought to. You know, there are a lot of things that you and I see alike. Careful, counselor. You might wind up a soft touch like young Baxter. You're not actually going through with that, are you, Dixie? Why not? I met him. I liked him. He likes me. Looks like a swell setup. Mrs. Jefferson Baxter, Jr. What's wrong with that, counselor? You're kidding. Getting even with old man Baxter is one thing, but marrying his son just to feather your own nest is another. That's well advice from a two-bit lawyer. I may be a two-bit lawyer, but if you marry him, you're nothing but a chiseler. Yeah? Oh, Jeff, good morning. Oh, nothing much, just getting ready for another day in the galleys. For this one day, you're going to forget all your worries. As a start, you're going to have lunch. Oh, I'd love to, but remember, I work for a bunch of Simon Legrees. Oh, so I'm going to have trouble with your public, huh? Well, if I don't give an imitation every night of Liza running fast across the ice, they wouldn't be happy. Will you please stop fussing? Oh, what did you say, Jeff? I'd love to. I'll be ready. Goodbye. Uh, Maddie, I think I'll wear my red dress with the sequins. Is he a nice young man? Well, of course he is. Do you think you ought to wear your red dress? Now, what would you suggest, a Mother Hubbard? Oh, your gray suit is lovely. All right, Maddie, the gray suit it is. Thank you, Miss Dixie. Oh! Am I dreaming or are you walking in your sleep? Oh, my voice is in wonderful condition this morning. I've been practicing. Vocalizing? Uh, what? Using the scales. Oh, I always weigh myself, but that has nothing to do with my voice. <laughs> well, we prima donnas must take care of our voice now for breakfast. A my breakfast, a my breakfast. And good old ham and eggs. Why, Maxwell, you have a wonderful voice. I didn't know you could sing. Why, you sing just like Hitler. Why, Miss Irene, Hitler don't sing. He will when we catch him. Oh, ham and eggs, oh, ham and eggs. And ain't that gravy good. <laughs> All right, never mind. That business is starting. Go get that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. <clears throat> yes? $250 on roses in bloom. Where, the tropical? Sure, yeah. I got it. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah? $500 on roses in bloom? Hold it. Yes? Yes? On roses in bloom? Mm-hmm. Hello? Yeah, sure, I got it. <laughs> Maxwell, if the betting gets too heavy, lay it off with Alec and Barney. Yes, sir. Uh, look at your balls. Could I kind of put two dollars on roses and bloom so I could kind of uh, encourage him along? Now, you know only suckers try to beat the horses. Yes, sir, but I talked to this one. Now, who are you going to believe, the horse or me? Yeah, but this horse has an honest face. Yeah. Get my hat and coat. Uh, yes, sir. What's this? Oh, this is one of my lazy days, Tim. I'm going to have breakfast in bed. Do you want some breakfast? No, thanks. I've had my breakfast. Oh, have you been eating alone? No. Sometimes I have relatives for breakfast. Well, it's always nice to change your diet, I always say. 
Maxwell. Oh, here, hold it. I'll get it. I love to answer telephone. No, Daffy Dill. Don't worry about it. I'll get it. <laughs> eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, hello? Yes? You want to bet $1,000 on Rosenblum to win? Oh, what do you want to spend all that money for? That horse can't win. It's a dog. Oh, sure I know. Uh-huh. Oh, that's all right. Now, you see, I saved you all that money, didn't I? Yeah, all right. Oh, that's all right. Call again sometime. Goodbye. That doesn't help my business very much. Well, you told me it was a dog. I want my customers to bet on dogs. That's how I make my money, to buy you fur coats. You're mad at me. No, I'm not, Irene. And stop that crying. You don't like me? Irene, believe me, I'm crazy for you. I'll be more emphatic. I'm crazy. Well, here's your hat and coat, boy. Okay, Maxwell, and you take care of everything. But where are you going? Oh, I've got a little uh, <clears throat> shopping to do. I'm going to get a new fur coat, Maxwell. Uh, what little old animal going to get skinned for this fur? I am. Ain't it the truth, Uncle Tim? Ain't it the truth? Is he your uncle? Oh, my, my. Oh, are you going out today, too? Yes, Jeff Baxter's taking me for a drive. Oh, we're all having such a good time today, and I'm so happy I'm like a little girl. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'll be home for dinner. Uh, meet me later at the club. I hope you have a nice time. Thanks. I'm sure I will. Tell Mr. Tim about it, will you? You won't? <laughs> That's swell. Thank you. Oh, top of the morning, Mr. Gaylord. And the balance of the day to you, Matty. <laughs> Where is everybody? Uh, she's out. I've had my B1, so I think I'll go get my B2. Vitamins? Breakfast number two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Make yourself at home, Mr. Gill. Thanks, Maddie. I think I will. <laughs> well, how's everything with you? Oh, it's been wonderful. You feel guilty about the deception? Does your conscience bother you at all? Oh, no, sir. I'm really trying to be like a mother. You see, my Prayers were answered that I'd have a home and a family to look after. So it, it can't be a sin. No. No, it can't be, Maddie. Not for you. You're a good woman. And I think you're a clever young man. Oh, I used to think so, too. Oh, sure, I had the usual dreams. When I woke up, I found myself writing habeas corpus writs for gamblers and small-time chiselers. It's a cheap little sideshow in the big city. I really meant to be clever. So Dixie's gone out, has she? Yes. I wasn't very nice to her at the club last night. Well, repentance is good for the soul. Now listen, you just make it your business to see her and, uh, and apologize. You know, a woman likes a man to admit he was wrong. Once in a while anyway. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Maddie. I'll get around to that sometime. <laughs> There's something I want to ask you. If it's easy to answer. Well, all you have to do is say yes. Oh, can't I say no or 
maybe or let me think about it? No, nope. only yes will do. Dixie, you know what I want to ask you. I want you to marry me. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. I can't say yes. Will you let me think about it? All right, darling. Don't forget, I'll ask again. Good night. Good night, Jeff. Call you tomorrow? Jeff, no. Oh, Jeff. Evening, Dad. And Alice? Yes, dear. What are you two doing up? Well, I think your father has something to talk over with you. Your aunt informs me that you've been seeing a lot of a certain young woman. Why, Aunt Alice, you're getting around. This is serious, Jeff. You bet it is, Dad, but I only wish I could make Miss Barlow understand it. Did you know I had that young woman arrested? Well, of course I do, but... Well, you'll have your chance to apologize. The woman's a burlesque dancer. Well, I think she's entitled to make a living. Doesn't it mean anything to you becoming involved with a burlesque dancer? I, I think it's outrageous. I thought you had more common sense, Jeff. Oh, and Alice, the Victorian era is gone. And Dad, well, don't make a pompous demigod of yourself. I want it to stop right now. I want you to put an end to it. Well, I'm afraid it isn't as easy as all that, sir. You see, well, I'm in love with Dixie. Don't be ridiculous. Well, there's no use being shocked over it, Dad. Try to see my side of it. Well, good night. Night, Aunt Alice. Good night, dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, Maxwell, shut that off. Uh, hello, Mr. Baxter. Uh, don't open me? Oh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a little chatter? I'm not hungry. Oh, I know, just the thing. Maxwell, fix Mr. Baxter a drink. Don't bother. Oh, no bother at all. One of Louis Alalulu coming up. Are you sure Miss Barlow knows I'm waiting? Oh, I don't know. She's a very unpredictable young lady. Oh, Timmy, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. He's my husband. I'm married to him. <laughs> she gonna move in, too? Well, he hasn't decided yet. Oh, well, I guess one more mouth to feed won't make any difference. <laughs> I have an awful headache this morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Daffy Dill. Well, that's all right. I have a headache every morning. See, I read with the light off. Oh, you read without light? Yes, I always read without the light. You see, I read to get sleepy. And if I read with the light on and fell asleep, why, then the light would be on. This way I fall asleep and the, the light, light is, is off. off. And uh, what do you read, uh... Oh, I don't know. It's so dark. I don't know what it is. <laughs> He's a silly man, isn't he? <laughs> Ain't you glad you came? Will you please inform Miss Barlow that I am still waiting? Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Baxter. I don't suppose this is a social call. I think I could speak plainly. I'm used to all kinds of palaver. It's about my son. Uh. Hello, Jim. There's a little confidence going on between Dixie and old man Baxter. At least you're honest. Ten thousand dollars if you don't see Jeff again. You don't put a very high price on your son, do you, Mr. Baxter? Suppose you name your price. Has it ever occurred to you that I might be in love with Jeff? It wouldn't occur to me that you could be in love with anybody. The conference is over, mister. Uh, uh, here's your Louisiana Lulu. Get out of my way. Now goes malicious. I'll take that. Nice going, baby. Couldn't help overhearing the show. How'd you like my performance? Oh, you were superb. Oh, yes, and clever, too. After all, why settle for a measly $10,000 when you can marry Jeff Jr. and cash in for the rest of your life? You know everything, don't you, Counselor? I know one thing. There's one happy virtue about the game of love. You can never cheat anyone but yourself. As I was saying, boss, I was standing on the corner, and all at once a man passed me. Said, this is getting real, ain't it? Hello, Mr. Gaylord. 
Come in to see our new show? It's a great show. Yeah, I, I know. Here, check this for me, please, miss. We'll make yourself right at home. See anything you want, just ask for it. Okay, Harry. Take care, Mr. Gaylord, will you? Thanks, Harry. Folks all go to Lennox Avenue to cut new rugs each day. The hula hut is Harlem's rendezvous. They do a brand new dance this way. Woogie hula. Woogie hula. A Hawaiian refrain with the Harlem screen all in one. Woogie hula. Woogie hula. It's the latest thing when you dance or sing all in fun. Down in Honolulu, Audible Bula, everybody's doing the jive. Feeling like a native, friendly and related. Hep cats love that boogie dive. Hula hula. Hula hula. Better learn this tune, for you'll soon be doing the boogie hula. out front again. I know it. Are you going to see him tonight? Can't get over what he said to me. Oh, Dixie, don't be so stubborn. Come on, why don't you go out and see him? I guess it's only right for a girl to do as her mother says. That's the ghetto. <laughs> There's Gil over there. What's the matter with him? Oh, you don't know what he's up against. He's up against the bar, but what's the matter with him? No, no, I, I mean, I don't think he feels well. I'll go over and see what I can do. No, here comes the doctor. She'll know what to do. Hello. Oh, hello. You're not very cordial, Counselor. 
I have a drink. I'll take yours. You know, I just remembered a toast. There is one happy virtue about the game of love. You can never cheat anyone but yourself. If you came for congratulations, I congratulate you. You're a fool. Why don't you tell me to chuck the whole business? I've had my revenge. Oh, but it isn't complete. Oh, you'd be silly to give up now. You're on the home stretch. You can make me so mad at times I can't see. You know I don't want to go through with it. Well, as your counselor, I advise you to proceed. You'll end up with an honored name, position, wealth. What more do you want? And you're nothing more than my counselor? That's all. I didn't ask for the job in the first place. Now that you're in the clear, I'm glad to be finished with it. You're lying. You know why I wanted to talk to you. Oh, yes, because you got a little soft-hearted. Don't do it. Remember I told you once if you got started, you'd be a soft touch? You really belong to that cheap sight show you're so proud of. Now, maybe I like it that way. Now, good luck. Happy honeymoon. I tried to tell Gil, but all he said was that I was doing right. As if he knew. So I might as well marry Jeff and get away from cops and cheap lawyers and... I know, darling. And I hope you'll be very happy. But I am happy. Sure you're happy. Of course. to tell the police exactly what you told me? Yes, sir, I am. We'll go downtown directly. Alice, sir. I've changed my mind. We're going to the wedding. I'll do nothing of the kind. Now, just trust to me. I'm sure everything will turn out satisfactorily. Can't imagine what you're thinking of, seeing Jeff married in that place. You won't want to miss what's going to happen. Now, uh, I'm just on my way to police headquarters. Did you find Maddie? She's not there, but this was on the bed. Maddie's left. She's gone back to the home. She says I don't need her anymore. Where's Gil? He must get her back here. But all those people waiting to see a wedding, I can't stand it. I must see Gil. But he isn't here. It's just like him. He's never here when you want him. Connect me with Mr. Gaylord, please. Dixie's in a jam. We got a stall. But the wedding has to be held up. Do something. You gotta hold up the wedding. Well, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Uh, just another piece, Borden. Uh, this is Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent? How do you do? And our happy bridegroom, Mr. Baxter. Mr. Baxter. How do you do? No. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Come on, tune up. Gentlemen, I see we're just about ready. Oh, good. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Jefferson, won't you? Don't worry. Uh, the ring. The ring. Oh, the ring. Huh? Oh, the ring. ring. The ring. Uh, the ring. Oh, I don't want the ring. Doesn't want the ring. Doesn't want the ring. Poor Aunt Clementine's ring.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will now sing a song. As this is a happy and festive occasion, I will add to your enjoyment. Let's all be gay. All right. Everybody seems to have their share of joy. Why even flowers fail? Get simple. But somehow, uh, I'm just like a flower that grows out in the wild. I'm all alone. It seems like I'm nobody's child. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. Nobody wants. It just kind of seems like, seems like I'm nobody's child. Nobody's child. Nobody cries out, oh, oh. Nobody even bothers to just kind of say goodbye. Goodbye. Nobody worries you're nothing around here. They don't care if you live or if you die. Sometimes you die. And I just keep looking for my little bluebird. Just a little old bluebird that might kind of bring me a little happiness. But my bluebird is black. Awful black. There's something the matter with me, I guess. Gee, there's some things you can't have in the nation. But I got a lot of love, and brother, it's not rationed. It just seems, seems like I'm nobody's child. Oh, all right. I, 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 I'll tell Mr. Borland when he comes in. Uh... Hello? Two dollars on Lady Dainty's nose. What's that? A pa pa parley if win to uh, he no lion. Well, what is all this? Uh... I'll tell you what it is. Mr. Baxter, you've been making book on the horses. What? Bookmaking is a pretty tough rep to beat, Mr. Baxter. Well, don't be ridiculous. Get on with the arrest. Just a minute. Dixie, the judge wants to see you. Do I have to go right away? Right now. That's wonderful. Uh, oh. Play something sweet. Didn't you notice we were getting married? Yes. But first the bride has to do 180 days in jail. Mercy. What? What Mercy. Yeah, we found out that mother she dished up was a phony. Dug her up at an old lady's home. Now the judge is mad. She told him a wicked lie. She's going to jail. Is it true, Dixie? Well, as the mouthpiece once said, guilty as charged. Well, you couldn't marry a jailbird, could you, Jeff? Well, Dixie, I... Well, could you, Jeff? Oh, I understand now. You want an out. Well, if that's the way you want it, darling. Thanks, Jeff. How'd you find out? 
The old lady came in and spilled everything. Where is she? She's going to jail, too. Take me to her, quick. Well, man about town, remember me? Wonderful. You're the only one who knew what to do. From now on, you're never going to get away. We'll even go to jail together. <laughs> it is the duty of this court, in view of the fraud and deception practiced in this case, to rescind the order of probation that applied to Dixie Barlow. I'm afraid you will have to serve 180 days in the county workhouse. If it pleased the court, I have a statement to make. Gil! What may have been fraud no longer exists. I have here a petition of adoption. When it is signed by the defendant, this lady legally becomes Miss Barlow's mother. You're right, Counselor. The case against Dixie Barlow and Matilda Wickley is dismissed. But... Counsel was also a party to the fraud and deception. What have you to say? I plead guilty as charged. If the witness in this case happened to be your wife, she couldn't testify against you. What's that get up for? To get married and judge. You see, he kept me out of jail once, and now I'm ready to make a sacrifice and keep him out. In that event, come to my chambers. Court's dismissed. Mother. You should have asked me to marry you a long time ago. You fool. <laughs>